we are going to now find the derivatives of log functions. First, we want to address that y equals the natural log of x is equivalent to e to the y equals x. We're going to need this information in just a moment. I'm going to let you know what that derivative law is first, and then I'm going to use this equivalency to actually derive the derivative. So therefore, given y equals the natural log of x, then the derivative of y with respect to x, which is dy dx, is equal to 1 over x. Now I'm going to make a little note here. The argument is x, and the derivative is going to be 1 over the argument. Now, when the argument is more than just 1x, we're going to have to use the chain rule. So we have an and here. So and the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of u, that's going to equal 1 over the argument of u times the derivative of that argument u. And this is called the chain rule. And we use this when the argument is not 1x. So when the argument is not 1x, we're going to have to use the chain rule. And that's what this is right here, the chain rule. Okay, so now where does this come from? Okay, let's take a look at this equivalency here. Now, this is a log function on the left. It's a log function, and this is a log function on the right. Both of these are log functions. Yeah. Now, I did say that correctly, and you did hear me correctly. The function on the left is a log function. It's the natural log function. And the function on the right is a natural log function. And that's because you have e raised to the y value, not e raised to the x value. e raised to the x value is an exponential function e raised to the y value is a logarithmic function written in exponent form, okay? So if I want to find the derivative of, let's find the derivative. Find dy dx of y equals the natural log of x. I'm going to use e to the y equals x. And I'm going to find the derivative of y with respect to x. So we're going to find the we're going to take the derivative of both sides d dx, and then I'm just going to move this over here and write d dx. So I'm taking the derivative of both sides, taking the derivative of e to the y, taking the derivative of x. Well, the derivative of e to the y with respect to x is the exponential function itself e to the y times the derivative of the exponent. So that's dy dx. And the derivative of x is just 1, right? The derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. So now I can solve for dy dx by dividing both sides by 1 over e to the y. And you're probably scratching your head right now going, well, how does that 1 over x, right? Because look, this is what our derivative is, right? Our derivative of y equals the natural log of x which is the derivative of e to the y equals x. How do you get x out of that? Well, this is pretty awesome right here. What's e to the y equal to? x. So everywhere we see e to the y, we can put an x in its place. So we have dy dx equals 1 over x. And we've just derived the derivative of the natural log function. So we've just derived that. Instead of using y equals the natural log of x, we used e to the y equals x, which is the same thing. Same thing, just a different form. But it gives you the same derivative. Okay, so now I've been talking a long time about that. Hopefully that made sense and you maybe had a, an aha moment, I'm hoping. If not, we're going to practice and maybe later you'll have an aha moment. We've got probably about nine of these problems to do. We're going to find the derivative of f of x equals the natural log of 2x. Now, remember, I'm going to keep saying this over and over and over again. 
the derivative of a log function is 1 over the argument times the derivative of the argument. So f prime of x is going to equal 1 over the argument times the derivative of the argument. And the derivative of the argument is 2. So the derivative of natural log of 2x is 1 over x. So you're probably thinking, oh, well, that's going to happen every time. No, not going to happen every time. But it does happen in a very certain situation. So this right here, what we used was the chain rule. I'm going to try and bring out to your attention which rule we're using. It's going to be the product, it's going to be the quotient, or it's going to be the chain rule, or maybe a combination. This one was the chain rule. f of x equals natural log of 5x. Well, the derivative is going to be 1 over the argument of 5x times the derivative of 5x, which is 5. And when I multiply that out, I get 1 over x. And you're probably thinking, oh, she lied. It's always 1 over x. Nope, I didn't. I didn't lie. But which rule is this? Is this the product rule, quotient rule, or chain rule? Hopefully you're saying chain rule, move on. Okay, chain rule, we're moving on. Number three, f of x equals the natural log of 2x squared plus 4. You're thinking this is a piece of cake. 1 over the argument, 1 over the argument, times the derivative of the argument. And the derivative of the argument is 4x plus 0, so just 4x. Now, we're going to have to simplify. We've got a 2 in the denominator that can be factored out. And that 1 times 4x, let me show you here, 1 times 4x is 4x. 4 divided by 2 is 2 in the numerator. So we're going to have our derivative is... 2x over x squared plus 2. And which rule was that? Product, quotient, chain, or combination? That 2 was just the chain rule. The derivative is 1 over the argument times the derivative of the argument. That's your chain rule. Okay. Hopefully you're feeling pretty confident like you can take on the world. Well, here's the world, number four. f of x equals x times the natural log of x. Okay, I've got two factors that are variable factors. x and the natural log of x. So in this problem, we're gonna have to use the product rule. So if you were a little unsure about what the product rule was or getting it right, hopefully you're getting better at it and you're gonna have an opportunity right here. Derivative of the yellow factor, x, is one times the green factor, which is the natural log of x, plus the first term, or the first factor rather, x, times the derivative of the second, which is one over x. And that's going to equal the natural log of x plus 1. Now, I don't like writing it that way because sometimes people get the wrong impression, even though it's very clear that the argument is x. Some people want to add that plus 1 into the argument. So I just rewrite this so it's extremely clear. Or Another acceptable to way to write this is the natural log of parentheses x plus 1. Those are the two ways that I would choose to write it if I were you. Well, if I were me, that's how I would write it. But if I were you, that's how I would write it as well. Okay, here's another one. Is this product, quotient, or chain? Product, quotient, or chain? You can see that I'm using a different color. Red is chain rule, blue is product rule, and green is going to be quotient rule. So 
So we always could use a little practice with the quotient rule. The derivative of the numerator is 1 over x times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator, which is 1, times the numerator, which is natural log of x, all over the denominator squared. So I have 1 over x times x is 1 minus the natural log of x all over x squared. Now, do you all know why it was the quotient rule? It's the quotient rule because you're dividing by a variable. So you're dividing the natural log, so you're dividing the logarithm, not the argument. You're dividing the entire logarithm by a variable. If you're dividing the entire argument or the t entire logarithm by a constant, different story. But if you're dividing the logarithm by a variable, then you've got, you know, what I would call two factors. But it's not really a factor. You've got a, a dividend and a divisor. I guess that's what we call them. Dividend and a divisor, yeah, instead of factors. Okay, f of x equals natural negative natural log of x over x squared. Ponder that one for a second. It's a try. See if you can actually try this one. See if you can try. Okay, if you haven't pressed pause and you're still working on it, press pause because I'm going to start showing my work. f prime of x is going to equal, well, first I'm going to rewrite this with the negative in the numerator just because that helps me a little bit. So f prime of x is going to equal negative 1 over x. That's the derivative of the numerator. So the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x, and then you've got the coefficient of negative 1. So that's negative 1 over x times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator, which is 2x, times the numerator, which is negative natural log of x. And then that's all over the denominator squared. So we're going to have negative x, because negative x squared over x is negative x, plus 2x natural log of x all over x squared. Now the numerator I can factor out in x, negative 1 plus 2 natural log of x all over x. I should have said x to the fourth, right? I bet you were wondering when I was going to correct that one. And then the x to the fourth and the x are going to share an x, so that's going to give us x cubed in the denominator. So I'm going to rewrite this in a very pretty form. f prime of x is equal to 2 natural log of x, because I want to have that natural log first and tuck in the minus 1. So I'm going to put the x in parentheses and then tuck in that minus 1, and then that's all over x cubed. Hopefully you can see that. If you can't see it, I'm going to... I'm going to kind of reduce the size of all of this so that I can. There. It's better. I don't know if you can tell it's an x cubed, so I'll rewrite it. There we go, x cubed. And now I have room to box it. Excellent, 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 excellent. Okay, the next few examples, we're gonna to have to use properties of logs. So the next ones, we're gonna use what we learned in the previous lesson and use properties of logs. So you can see right here, ay, 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 ay. We've got an exponent right here, so we've got a power. These are gonna be properties of logs that we're gonna to have to use. So we've got a power in number seven, we've got a product, so we'll be able to break that down into a couple of logarithmic terms. And the same thing in number nine, we'll be able to use uh, what we're doing in number seven and number eight for number nine. So number seven, 
I'm going to start with f of x, and I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to rewrite this as the natural log of x plus 1 to the 1 half power. Then I'm going to make it even more simpler by saying 1 half times the natural log of x plus 1. And now when we find the derivative, we're going to have that 1 half, that constant out front, and then we're going to have the argument of x plus 1. So the derivative is going to equal 1 half times the derivative of natural log of x plus 1 is 1 over the argument times the derivative of the argument. So here's our coefficient. I want to try and use colors here. Here's our coefficient. Right? This is our coefficient right here. Coefficient. And then we had a logarithm. I'm going to write that in purple. We have a logarithm right here. And then this right here is the derivative of the logarithm. And this is the derivative of the argument. So don't forget when you're finding the derivative of log, you have to find the derivative of the logarithm and then the derivative of the argument. And the derivative of the logarithm is 1 over the argument and then times the derivative of the argument. I actually said that rather, rather nicely without a mistake. It's impressive. Okay. Okay, number eight. What we're gonna do on number eight, I think I'm gonna need some more room here. And if you need more room, and then I'll be able to use all that, that space over there for number nine. But number eight, I'm gonna move down here so I just have the comfort of being able to write it. As large as I need to, okay. So what we want to do is we want to expand first. So we're going to rewrite by expanding first. We want to make these logarithms as simple as possible so that we don't have to find the derivative of that entire argument. So if we can make the arguments simpler, then make the arguments simpler by expanding, then that's what we're going to do. So we've got the product here, the natural log of x plus the natural log of x squared plus 1 quantity squared, and this is equal to f of x. I forgot the equals f of x. And then I'm going to rewrite that just one more time. The natural log of x plus 2 times the natural log of x squared plus 1. And our derivative is the derivative of each term. So the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. That's one term all by itself. Then we've got the next term, 2 times the natural log of x squared plus 1. So the coefficient times 1 over the argument times the derivative of the argument. So I have 1 over x plus 4x over x squared plus 1. Now, I like this answer. I'm perfectly okay with that answer, but it wouldn't surprise me if they got a common denominator. So we're gonna bring that back only. This, I like this answer, but this is an opportunity for me right now to refresh getting a common denominator. So I'm gonna need an x squared plus one in the first fraction. And in the second fraction, I'm gonna need an x. So this is going to equal x squared plus 1 plus 4x squared all over x times x squared plus 1. And that's 5x squared plus 1 
all over x times x squared plus 1. Now, 5x squared plus 1 doesn't cancel out with any common factor in the denominator. Therefore, that would be our answer as a single term. So here we just perform the addition. Perform the addition to get that answer right there. Okay, let's see what you can do. Let's see if you can, since I did number eight, let's see if you can do number nine So you can press pause, maybe you already pressed pause in your back. Number nine, I'm gonna expand that and make that argument more simple. So I'm gonna have two times the natural log of x plus one half times the natural log of x squared plus one. And the derivative is going to equal two times one over x plus one half times one over x squared plus one times 2x. So we have 2 over x plus, these 2's cancel out, and I have x over x squared plus 1. And if you got that far, that's excellent. We can take it a step further. I would have 2 times x squared plus 1 plus x times x all over x times x squared plus 1. I just got a common denominator. Yours might look just a little bit different because you did it a different way but you should end up with the same thing that I'm ending up with, which is this answer right here. So if you got the one where there's the, where there's the addition sign, then you did the calculus properly, which is excellent. And if you were able to get to the simplified answer where you actually perform the operation of addition, and you were able to get that answer, then your skills are, are right where they need to be from college algebra and algebra two. I think you did this in algebra two as well. Sometimes when it's been a long time though, it's, it's hard to remember how to do that. So a little bit of practice here and there, it makes a difference.